Welcome everyone to the Atma webinar. We're happy to have everybody here. Looking forward to uh, give you guys some secrets on um, how to market your business during the slow season. I see Andy's on this this webinar and Dale. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're going to give a people, few people, a few minutes. Uh, we know that there's some late stragglers that tend to straggle in, you know, five to 10 minutes during the web that as the webinar has already begun. Isn't that right, Leslie? Yep, those slackers. <laughs> well, those who are on the call and those who will be watching this to, on our YouTube channel and in our social media, um, you know, uh, my name is Brian. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Advertree Marketing Agency, and I've got Leslie Radford as our co-host. Say hello, Leslie. Hey, guys. So Leslie's going to be our moderator today, and she's going to uh, help me um, answer any questions, give you guys any types of links if you're looking to do um, to go to our website and look at a few things or you know, any kind of questions, or if you want a consultation, um, Leslie will be happy to help set that up um, through the chat system and help me with the Q&A. So um, as we begin to wait for those who are jumping on here shortly, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. It's summer, and those of you who are uh, joining this um, during throughout summer, it's probably because summer is your slow season. Uh, as it is for us, you know, this is our slow season as well. Um, so, um, you know, this is no surprise. It's actually quite uh, co coincidental that uh, we actually did this uh, webinar during this this slow season. Isn't that isn't that right, Leslie? How convenient! I know. <laughs> <laughs> We've we been so busy that. the last few months. And we're still busy. We're just. It's just slowed down just a tad bit, right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But that's why we're here uh, to discuss what we are doing and what the experts are doing during these slow seasons. So uh, if you're joining us to, and you've got a pen, a paper, if you've got some, a notepad to take notes with, please do so. Uh, I'm about to give you guys a plethora of knowledge. Some of the stuff you're about to hear on this webinar is um you know uh, rinse and repeat and the reason why is because you know it's part of the fundamentals of marketing so uh, without further ado i think we're going to go ahead and get this thing started we're going to get this party started so let's go ahead and do this so um welcome to how to boost your marketing during the slow season um uh, you know as far as if you guys haven't heard about avid trinity marketing agency our vision is to change the world through innovation, inspire businesses to grow, and we are doing that. Um, you know, we're going to be launching some really, really cool stuff here in the next uh, few months. Uh, what we've been working on is literally what's in this webinar is new software, new technology, um, things to improve the customer experience um, and make our lives a lot easier uh, as far as a, a service-based business. Um, and we've been doing that through a lot of innovation, and we're hoping that our software and this new technology that we're going we're gonna to be pushing out there here in the next few months is going to inspire businesses to grow and take control of their business. So uh, just to recap, let's re recap Marketing 101, okay? So if you haven't taken our what Marketing 101 uh, webinar, we have a uh, beautiful website. Uh, uh, that has courses on it. It's called courses.avidtree.com. It has all of our past webinars on there. You can go and sign up and watch all of our past webinars or even on YouTube. Uh, we make it very easy for you guys to access our resources to learn about how to market your business. Um, and, uh, and so let's just recap, you know, marketing 101. So we talked about the three pillars of marketing, which we talk about in marketing there are three things that you need. You need to be creative, you need to be analytical, and probably the most important is you gotta be consistent, right? So you have to be creative. As you get, everybody kind of knows these kinds of things. Sometimes it, one, uh, actually working with a lot of business owners, 
um, you're either one or the other. You're very creative because you you really want to think to stand out and look good, uh, or you're really analytical because you're interested in the ROI and the clicks and and you need both, right? You need to be creative because you need to see, you need to figure out the right things to say. You need to be analytical because you need to know those numbers in order to uh, adapt and adjust your marketing tactics. And most importantly, you have to be consistent. If you're not consistent, it doesn't matter what you do, right? Um, Rome wasn't built in a day. That's what the, that's the old saying. And neither is your business, neither is marketing. Things take time. It takes consistency and persistency, right? So we talked about, uh, the customer journey process and how we simplified it. So everybody has the terminology of customers, uh, the customer journey and what that is. It's uh, it's the journey you take your customers uh, within your business. Now, if you look at our customer journey, it's a pyramid. Why is it a pyramid? No, it's not because it's a pyramid scheme or anything like that. No, it's a pyramid because a lot of marketers, they teach funnels, they teach all kinds of stuff, but they make it seem very easy. And, and the, the reality is that business is not easy. That's why it takes a village to grow a business, right? And so a pyramid meaning you have to climb the steps. You have to climb the ladder of, the, uh, and you got to help your customers climb the ladder. So first, the, the foundation of the pyramid is, do people know you exist? Are they aware that you exist? Uh, and if they do, they know what you do. Do they know your services? Things like that. And if they don't, you know, that's the first thing we need to work on is how do we get people aware of what you do and who you are? The second portion of this process is engagement. Are they engaging with your website, with your webinars, with your events, with your courses, uh, things that you produce? Are they engaging with you? Okay. Are they asking questions? If you're on this webinar and uh, you're not a client of ours yet, then you're in the engagement portion of this customer journey. You've engaged with us. And, and, and you're kind of in the conversion because you converted into somewhat of a lead. Okay. So we have your personal information. We have your personal data. So if you've converted, but we count conversions as a client, you've converted into a customer. Okay. And that's the part three is you converted into a customer and then it's our job in order as a marketing agency or as a company to delight and get you excited about our services. So that number five, you get advocation. And what's funny about that advocation, Leslie, and what we're going to talk about today is I just checked my email and I got a referral. Isn't that great? People are advocating Woo. us. Woo. So we are doing as we preach. We don't just preach just to preach. Okay. We are actually implementing our own strategies. It works. I promise you. Trust me, it works. And if you do it for your business, uh, you will be successful. So, and here's the deal about the process. Any good process is repeatable. So if you notice, we transform this into a flywheel. It's the same steps. Awareness, engagement, conversion, delight, and advocation. But you make it into a flywheel. What does a flywheel do when you start spinning it? It continues spinning. It never stops. And that's the thing about this process is it should never stop. You should always have uh, steps in every single uh, portion of the customer journey. What are you doing for awareness? Are you running advertising for your business? Are you going out and networking? Are you being in front of people? Do people know what you do and what you offer and who you are? engagement are you providing resources like we have are right now uh, with this webinar are you providing videography photography graphic design and content content's key to get people to engage with your business and in conversion are you building forms and and sign up uh like eventbrite that's a sign up conversion tool that we use forms on the site chatbots uh e-commerce and then having a solid website to to help you with these conversions and getting people from uh, prospect to lead to customer. Are you getting them excited enough and providing good service to provide good products and upsell and give them more and more and more? You know, we have clients right now that are upgrading with us. That is a key component uh, or a good sign for our company saying that we are doing our job. If our customers are, are are thinking of new ways to market their business and they're purchasing more services from us, then that means we've got them excited. They're delighted in what we do. And, and they're also going to be advocating our business. So um, don't be afraid during this slow season to ask for referrals from your uh, clientele. 
you know uh i think it's funny because we have asked for referrals and we're getting some i got a couple of different leads that i might have to follow up with right after this webinar which is great um and they get some good reviews on google because you know every day you know how it is uh, doing business on the internet the first thing you're gonna do is check your reviews and see if you're a credible source of business which is primarily why a lot of our people that go to our website convert because they know that we have good reviews they know that we have good reputation and then are you giving like coffee mugs and stuff like that uh, to your customers to get them excited and, and to wear and say hey look i'm a part of this brand community called advent trinity marketing agency so here's what we're going to learn in this webinar. So we learned about that in Marketing 101. That was a quick recap of Marketing 101. In this webinar, we're going to teach you how to boost your marketing during the slow season. Okay. And there are five key points that we're going to be talking about. Number one, we're going to talk about investing in relationships. Number two, and, and different types of ways to invest in relationships. Number two is invest in SEO and inbound marketing content. Number three is investing in customer retention. Number four is plan on the long-term marketing strategies. And number five, this is the time to explore new markets and ideas. So let's get into it. So why are we going to talk about these things? Why are we gonna do all these things during the slow season? It's pretty simple. It's what the experts do. OK, it's we're talking about big corporations to talk about big businesses that just because it's slow does not mean they take the time um, to to stop doing everything. Right. It's like, oh, you know, it's slow season. You know, we can wait until it starts getting busy again. Now is not the time. Now is actually. Um, and, and it's funny because Dale's on this call because, uh, you know, he taught me the phrase. He's a business coach, by the way. Uh, Dale taught me that there's two types of uh, of working in the business right you're either working in the business or on the business right and if this is your slow time guess what you're going to be doing you're going to be working on the business working in the business you're the salesperson you're the accountant you're this you're that you're helping the customers you're doing customer retention you're doing customer service working on the business is exactly what the experts are doing they're thinking about how are we going to improve the customer journey how are we going to improve our website our branding what is it that we need to work with uh, uh for and, and prepare ourselves for those big moments so invest in relationships so during this time it's time to build relationships and the relationships that you do have invest more in them and we're going to talk about how how to do this so we're going to be nurturing customer relationships uh just like we did in this uh in, in this flywheel of course so let's talk about customers and if you have customers you're going to want to reach out to them you're going to want to nurture those relationships maybe send them promotional goods keep them top of mind and saying hey look listen we're thinking about you still we haven't gone away uh we know this is a um you know, uh, and, and it, uh, we have some people that are uh, massage therapists on this. Uh, you know, we haven't, uh, uh, you know, forgotten about you. If you're still hurting on X, Y, Z, we can help you out with that and give out a referral program. Hey, bring a friend and you get 50 percent off on your next, uh, you know, massage or something like that, of that matter. Uh, or, you know, give them some credit. We have people that um, here in a co-working space that they're referring some of their friends to get shared desk and that's how we're getting some of our business right now is because they're like hey i, I have this really sweet office space that I, I i work at and i co-work at and um and if you refer somebody that member gets a hundred dollars right just a small thing to say hey thank you for referring business uh to to our co-working space so think about how to nurture those customer relationships and how to have a referral program so if you notice in this, we're going to be focusing in this area right here for the customer relations is in the delight and advocation. Obviously, if you if you know um, that you're struggling with a customer in, in the delight factor, then you need to focus on that and making sure that that customer is delighted. Now, here's the thing. If you, you're not going to make every customer uh, happy, OK, it's just it is what it is. But if you know that customers are happy, you know that they're satisfied, you can have focus on the advocation and get them to refer you business okay so let's talk about co-marketing and internal training um so during this time uh, you need to work on affiliate marketing 
Okay. And what I mean by affiliate marketing is I've got Dale and I've got Andy here on this webinar. Thank you for joining us, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to uh, reach out to you guys as a part affiliate partnerships and saying, Hey, how can we work together for you to refer me business? Maybe even to have some, um, some uh, monetary value to it where you get commission to refer me business, which is actually primarily what we're working on right now is a portal to do that. And it's actually launching next month where somebody can come in and become a partner with us, refer us business, and they get paid instantly. It's pretty cool. So we're working as an advent training marketing agency on this affiliate marketing program. Here's another thing you could be doing, retraining staff to prepare for the big seasons, okay? If you're not um, preparing your, uh, and, and it's funny right now, is, is Leslie, is I'm actively right now recruiting. Recruiting uh, during the summer season for August, September, when I know that we're going to launch new software, new technology to have people out there on the field trained and prepared to explain this new software that we're launching. So, um, and new services, right? And the things that are happening in the digital marketing world, it's kind of crazy. It's its the future of marketing, which we just went to AdWorld. And I'm telling you right now, there's some crazy stuff happening uh, about to happen and the entire marketing is about to change. So, so retraining staff, uh, investing that time. And if you are your, if you're a one man show, train yourself. You know, retrain, look at your sales process, look at your marketing process, train yourself and prepare yourself. Uh, do you have an elevator pitch? Do you know how to explain your business in 30 seconds or less? And if you don't, then you got to learn how to do that. Um, do you have presentations uh, prepared? Do you, do you have 10 minute presentations, 30 minute presentations, an hour presentation, you name it. You want to prepare all those kinds of presentations where you are an expert in your field and you can use those presentations. Guess what? You can use those presentations as content for your website, for social media. It's exactly kind of what I did with uh, Leslie here, right, Leslie? Uh, I created a presentation for a new software. Uh, that we're going to be launching for restaurants. I gave her the presentation, and I would say that helped you a lot with your with the the content creation on the website, didn't it? Absolutely. She would have been lost if I didn't have that presentation. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to it, so you gotta you gotta know every aspect of it. So, and it's the same for your business. You got to know every little detail, every little aspect, every little question that a customer is going to ask. Yes. Yep. And, and you're going to get a lot of questions. And if you don't know those questions, write down those questions that people have asked you and prepare yourself. Because if one person asked it, you're going to get asked it again. Okay. You know, if they're asking you right there in person, there are probably people on your website asking the same question. Why don't we have a frequently asked questions on the website? Have you prepped that? Those are the kinds of things we're talking about. And then uh, networking. If you're, it, you know, a lot of us have, have spent a lot of time in networking. But really diving into your networking business, you know, what is it that you're planning to do? Who is your power team? Who is it that you're trying to really um, align with so that you can have a referral program between one another? Okay. Invest in SEO and inbound marketing content. Of course, I'm going to talk about this. We're a digital marketing company, right? Um, but it's actually true. And the reason why you invest now during the slow time in SEO and inbound marketing content is because SEO takes time. Inbound marketing takes time. Most people or more businesses, what they tend to do is they invest in this when they're busy. And that's great. You have the funds. You, you can do that. But what ends up happening is they expect an ROI during the slow season. And that's just not how it works. You actually want to prepare SEO and inbound marketing content to ramp up so that it's prepared during the peak seasons, okay? So here's some stuff from Marketing 2.0 we're going to recap because for those who have, uh, missed out on Marketing 2.0, we talked about SEM, which is search engine marketing, and how there's two different types of uh, SEM. This is organic and then there's paid, okay? So let's review those back again. So in organic SEO, we talked about this. It takes time. It takes consistency. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But when I tell you right now, 
once you start to rank organically for specific keywords that you want to be found under, it makes life a lot easier. And then there's pay per click. This is a more immediate way to see an ROI, but it still takes time. And what our philosophy as a uh, uh, search engine marketing uh, company is you need both. Okay. It's funny, I have three E's. You need both. Uh, you need SEO for the, the long-term investment. You need PPC for the immediate ROI. Both have a role in increasing your business revenue. Now, I'm about to get a, really, a little bit geeky here when it comes to SEO and SEM. Um, so here's the deal. So you come to us as a company. We start to do your website. We start to rank you on Google, and, and you start to rank under keywords. This is how SEO and PPC work together. Now let's just hypothetically say I build a website under a website design company. Well, I do all the SEO for website design, website design, and then I start to rank highly under website design, but I don't rank highly under social media marketing. So organically I'm number one on, on website design, but on social media I'm like number 40 or 50. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use PPC to a boost my social media company, my part of the a portion of the business. So I'm already being found under website design. Now I got to figure out how to market my uh, social media marketing. So I'm going to pay to get social media marketing up there. Does that make sense? If it does, if it doesn't, and you'd like more explanation, Leslie, feel free to reach out to us in the chat. and We could definitely consult you on how that looks. But there's three types of SEM when it comes to to actually three types of SEO and and and, uh, and we'll be focusing on these three types, which is local SEO, website SEO, and content SEO. And this is what you should be working on right now if you're if you're in the slow season. Number one, you got to make sure that you can be found on Google. If you can't be found on Google, my business under listings, uh, under specific keywords, you've got to go into business.google.com and fix that. Okay. Uh, can people find you locally? Uh, you're, you put in your service near me. If you don't pop up on the city map, we've got a problem. We've got to fix that almost immediately because that means nobody can find you. Nobody knows you exist, even on a local standpoint. Then you have to be uh, power listed. And here's the deal about power listing. So Google My Business is just one listing out of the 150 plethora of listings out there we're talking about google my business bing facebook instagram can you be found on the internet and if and we actually have a scan on our website if you go to advertree.com and you go into the resources there's going to be a thing called a listing scan if you scan your business on the internet right now you can tell you can see if you're listed correctly on the internet um and if you sometimes, what ends up happening too is um, you've got some weird wonky information on the on the listings. Think about it. All of these platforms are softwares, and they're going to do updates, and they're going to do X, Y, Z. That information is going to get uh, uh, probably messed up um, eventually, right? Uh, if you're not on top of it on a consistent basis. Um, so make sure you're power listed. If you're a uh, it's if you are a service-based business and you aren't doing local search ads, uh, actually, this is local search ads. If you are uh, trying to drive visitors to your shop, if you are uh, a kind of a business that has a, a storefront, you need people to, to visit your store, run some search ads. If you're not popping number one on the map, there's an easy way to do that is to run those local search ads to get more visits, more calls, and more customers asking for directions. And then you've got local services ads, okay? Now, this is cool. Um, this is, hasn't been launched too, too long. Probably, you know, it's only been out for about two years now. Uh, local service ads is basically like the new uh, home advisor or even the uh, the new, yeah, home advisor where you're a, a professional expert in your industry. Um, so if you are uh, not running service ads, this would be great for you because what Google does, and it's pretty it's pretty uh, extensive, they're going to do a background check on you as a person uh, because what you're going to be is uh, you're going to be Google screen and Google guaranteed. Um, so this is a great way uh, if you're not wanting to pay per click uh, to a website and do, generate SEO, but you really need uh, 
more of an immediate and call to action based of your business, local services ads is for you. Now, with local service ads, there's you have to be in this realm. Okay, these are the the these are uh, the types of services that can be listed under local services ads. So it's not it's not designed for everyone. Uh, it's mainly designed for you know you can kind of see carpet cleaning, carpentry, general contracting, handyman, moving, massage school, locksmith. Uh, you know, I think there's something about health and wellness around here somewhere. Uh, tax services, tree services, tutoring, um, just kind of these are once again, these are service based businesses and that you can be screened and start doing Google service ads uh, and being Google screened and Google guaranteed on Google. And then you got website SEO. So <clears throat> website SEO is all about the website itself. Um, so when we talk about the website, there's all kinds of things you have to do to the website in order to do uh, technical SEO. So, you know, alt text on images, meta title, meta description, page speed, mobile optimization, working on the speed of the website so that people don't bounce off the rep website. And, and then I kind of explain what the difference is between uh, technical SEO, what that looks like, and what pay-per-click looks like. You know, pay-per-click, you're paying to be in the top of the fold, and then here's the organic at the bottom. Okay, so uh, you'll see add, 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 and then organic. Um, so once again, we, we believe that you have to do both because I've had the comment saying, hey, Brian, you know, I, I'm the user that skips over these because I know their ads and I click on the organic. That may be true, but you still need the traffic. You need, still need the website traffic. You still need users going to the website. You still need clicks so that you can start to rank higher on Google. And you never know, you might get calls and you might get some lead generation off of those paper clicks. And then content SEO, uh, which is Leslie's favorite here. She's the content writer. So doing keyword research, topic planning, uh, building pillar pages, uh, the root word of authority and being authority in your industry and authority on Google. Guess what, guys? You're trying to rank up on Google and trying to be at the top of the fold. Well, you're trying to be an authority. What is the root word of that? It's author. You need to write content, and there's no way around it. You've got to do keyword research. You've got to do topic planning and then pillar pages in order for you to, to tell Google that you are a relevant source of content, and you have enough traffic going to the website. You have enough people staying on the website long enough. You have the right keywords so that you can start ranking higher on Google. So... Here's what happens. So we just did a kind of like a, a speed run of, of just some knowledge on SEO and why it's important to um, and why it's important to uh, invest in SEO. But here's the deal: you can't do SEO unless your website is properly done. If you haven't, if if you're thinking about um, what to do during this time, a website redesign and upgrades to your current website is what you've got to do. You got to take a look at your website. You got to take a look at your SEO reports. You got to take a look at the traffic and you got to say, okay, how do we make this better? How do I get people to fill out the form more? How do I get this, this website to rank higher on specific keywords? And, and the other way to do that is through the website redesign and the upgrades you're going to do to your website. You cannot do SEO without focusing on the website, the website is the most important thing when it comes to search engine optimization. So if you're wanting to be found on specific keywords, whether that's organically or you're new in, in business and you need traffic going to it and converting, you have to get you have to think about doing a website redesign or if you're not going to do a complete website redesign, at least upgrading the current designs to make sure that it's operational and optimized uh, for mobile, tablet, everything. Invest in customer retention, okay? Um, so let's talk about investing in customer retention. So the question is, what kind of software uh, are you going to be using to streamline the onboarding and customer experience? Have you developed a welcome packet for your business, okay? And here's, here's the funny thing about this. It's slow right now. But guess what? There is a lot, and I mean a lot of software out there, okay? 
um, you've got to take the time to research what software makes sense for you and your industry. And how is it going to streamline the onboarding and customer experience? When I mean my onboarding is, you know, is it streamlining um, from when they pay to when they book an appointment with you to when they're um, either at your store or in a consultation with you or getting started with your services? How does that look like? And how is it that you're monitoring the customer experience? Are you monitoring the, how many times they, that person has come in? Do you have a referral program? Uh, all of that controlled by certain software that allows you to manage your member base or your client base, okay? Uh, um, how are you developing welcome packets? Uh, focus on making the customer and know exactly what they're getting themselves into. And this is one thing I've, I've learned um, from all the companies that I help manage is the less the customer knows of what they're getting into, the the le the more buyer's remorse they're going to have. But the more you have some sort of welcome packet and the more you explain exactly what they're getting, the more satisfied the customer will be. And you can use software to use this. You can do uh, email marketing campaigns like we do with uh, Leslie. Um, we have email templates that all of our staff uses to, to let people know exactly how, what we're going to be doing in the next few weeks with us. Plan for the long-term strategies, okay? So this is good um, because most people, when um, they're thinking about marketing, it, nine times out of ten, they're thinking about the short term, okay? They really are. How do I fix the right now? Instead of saying, hey, I've got a full year. I've got 12 months, got 365 days, and I know exactly when my high times and low times are. And I need to plan out, okay, how do I gradually grow so that in my second year is better than my first year? My third year is better than my second year. My fourth year, see, if you're regressing or if you have the same revenue as you did last year, you've plateaued, then we've got to look. What kind of long-term strategy are we doing? What things are working? What things are not working? Do we need to invest more uh, in advertising? Or do we need to invest more in content creation? Well, if you're talking about long-term strategies, it's a lot about content creation. It's about developing quality content, advertise more on media channels to plant seeds. What are media channels? Well, in today's age, right, is social media, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, TikTok. We're investing more in these media uh, media platforms to plant seeds so that when people go to these platforms, they see you, they're like, and, and you're in their face more than just once. That's also important to know because you want them to remember you when they're saying, okay, you know, you're right. I probably do need marketing. Focus on building a community around your brand. Okay. Um, every brand, every business, if you build a community around it, they will come and that's a part of the customer journey is if you've noticed a lot of what we're talking about is you have to get the you have to make sure that you're prepared to get the customers excited delighted and advocate your business and here's some smart remarks i've gotten in the past is brian i i'm really really good at this i just need to get them in the door and yeah well they'll be so satisfied okay well hey Talk is cheap. Action is real. Okay. If you were that good, trust me, I promise you, um, you would probably have a lot more clients. So there's something missing. There's always room for improvement. Don't be the student that doesn't want to continue learning or implementing. Trust me, I'm always learning and implementing. It's literally nonstop for me. Uh, so focus on building a community where people are around this brand. Uh, this brand of yours and saying, yes, I love it. Uh, I want to be a part of it. I want to grow with it and I want to continue growing with it. Explore new markets and ideas. So when I'm developing a software and I actually took this because, um, because it's kind of true it, uh, in everything that we do and in, in, in even in, in just marketing is research, design, implement, okay? So you research, you reevaluate your buyer persona, you explore new target markets, uh, look into your current clientele, 
looking the clientele that you're wanting to attract, you design a campaign or some sort of um, uh, customer journey uh, uh, roadmap, and then you implement it. And it continuously does that over and over again. In software, very similar to software, it's you research how the user likes the software, you design based on the improvements of the user experience, and you implement that so that the user experience is better once you do the update to that software. Well, in business, it's no different. You research, maybe even take a look at your clients and ask them, what can I do better? Survey them, design a plan, and then implement that plan and do it every single time. Do it over and over and over again until your business becomes a never evolving, growing, and uh, uh, scaling business. So those are the five things that you should be doing during these slow times. I'm going to post this video on YouTube for you guys to, to revisit and look at. Um, I'm also going to put it on the courses at uh, courses.avidtree.com. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you know, if you guys are ready to start and you need some help with any kind of your marketing needs, feel free to contact us by going to our website, avidtree.com. Call us at 682-270-8035 to get a free consultation today. Thank you guys once again for joining us. Uh, and thank you guys for who, who are watching on YouTube or on our courses at amateur.com. We hope that this has been a helpful resource for you. Remember, research, design, implement. Go out and, and everything that you learned today, you just did some research. Now take this information, design a plan, and start implementing today. Thank you guys for joining. We'll see you guys next time.